Hello everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm filming a gift guide for Mother's Day. In the UK, Mother's Day is on March 14th. I know in other countries it's on different dates. In the US I know it's in May, but hopefully these will still inspire you for some gifts if you need ideas for mothers and mother figures in your lives. I've chosen a real selection of books, some that focus on motherhood, others that are on subjects like gardening and cooking that I know my mum would really enjoy and hopefully other people would as well. So let's get started. I've got some novels first which I think would make brilliant reads and lovely gifts. So the first is Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. I read this book a few months ago and it's such a feel-good story and it is about the importance of motherhood as well as female friendship. So it's a great book to read even just in the month of March which celebrates International Women's Day as well. It's such a charming book, it's about a woman who suddenly chucks in her career as a teacher. It's set in the 1950s and this woman, Miss Benson, suddenly decides that it's about time that she fulfilled her dream of trying to find an extremely rare beetle that may not even exist. So she sets off on a long journey, a quest even, and she hires an assistant called Enid Pretty to help her and the women form a very unlikely friendship. It's a really funny book, I laughed out loud in many places, although the ending did bring a bit of a tear to my eye, but it's just a really heartwarming story and one I highly recommend. Then this is a recent read of mine, Old Herbaceous by Reginald, Reginald Arkell. I've already said to my mum that she has to read this. I know that she will absolutely love it and I recommend it to everyone else as well, especially anyone in your life who loves gardens and gardening. This would be a wonderful choice of book. It's about an old retired head gardener who reflects back on his life. He's lived from the late Victorian period right up till post World War II, so there's a lot to reflect on. And you follow his journey from being a gardener's boy right up to being head gardener of a big beautiful garden that's part of an English country house estate. And this book is really about a love for gardeners and for gardens and it's also a book about friendship. The most important relationship in Bert Pinnegar's life, he's the gardener, who is nicknamed Old Herbaceous, uh, but the most important relationship in his life is a friendship that he has with his lady, the mistress of the house at which he works. And it's just filled with a quiet, gentle kind of humour and there are some beautiful quotes in this as well. In the end it just really warms your soul and it's already become one of my favourite comfort reads. I think I'll definitely be returning to this book in trying times. So yeah, I really recommend this one. Then a lo another lovely read that I think would be a great gift for women in your life is A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. I'm a big fan of Tracy, Tracy Chevalier's writing, I love her historical fiction and this book is set in the interwar years, it's one about, it's one about the surplus women so a poor young woman who is grieving the loss of both her brother and her fiancé. She was one of many so-called surplus women in those circumstances following World War I. And in this book she decides she really needs to make a change. This book is about different kinds of mother-daughter relationship. 
The heroine here doesn't have a very happy relationship with her mother and she decides to strike out on her own. She moves to Winchester and gets a job, but surprisingly, what really captures her heart is becoming involved with a group of broderers at Winchester Cathedral. And these women embroider the sort of footstools, the kneelers, within the cathedral and she becomes involved in this huge project and a lot of this is based on real historical fact and you can go and see the examples of needlework at Winchester Cathedral which I would love to do one day. But motherhood is also at the heart of this story which you will see if you read it and there is a satisfying ending shall we say for the heroine which is always a good thing in my opinion. So this was another gentle but really interesting read that I thoroughly enjoyed and then I have to recommend One Fine Day by Molly Pantadowns. This captures one day in the summer very shortly after the end of World War II and we follow the day in the life of one woman who is a wife and mother and you see all of the trivial circumstances of her day and the hard work involved in trying to run quite a big cumbersome house in the English countryside after the war when there's still so much rationing when there's no one really to help her with all of the difficult tedious chores in the house but this woman is still able to find so much beauty in that summer's day, so much optimism about the new world ahead, the new way of life for people ahead, which is in contrast to her husband's feelings. Although by the end of the day, they come together and you feel that somehow this day has changed them both. And some of the optimism of this story also comes from the daughter um, that has a little role to play within this book. But it really is about this one woman and both her role as a mother, as a wife, but also as an individual. And I really just think it's such a great example of writing. I love Molly P Pantadown's writing. I think you can compare it to Catherine Mansfield's, maybe even a little bit of Elizabeth Taylor. She's a very gifted writer anyway, and this book is one of my favourites. So yeah, definitely a great choice for women or mothers in your life. And then this book was another favourite of mine that I read last year. It's called Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. And Again, this is quite a slim read, but one that really stays with you. And it, there are many mothers in this book. And motherhood is explored in very interesting ways. There are unexpected pregnancies that happen in this book and that are explored that can lead to difficult mother-daughter relationships. But there still is so much about family ties and love at the heart of this that really comes out in the story. It's a book that looks at multiple generations of a family and you get little snapshots of a lot of these different members of a family and their thoughts and their lives and it all revolves around a birthday party, a 16th birthday party of a young daughter. And the story takes you back away in the years and then you also go forward into the future and find out more about the members of this family. It's also a book about fatherhood as well, which I find really interesting. It's a story that examines what motherhood means and what pregnancy means, but it also really examines what fatherhood means. So there's so much that's packed into this and I really recommend it. And then for the particularly literary minded amongst your acquaintances, I thought I would share some of these sort of spin-off books for people who enjoy the classics. 
So for any fans of Jane Austen, I have a couple of recommendations. There's Miss Austen by Jill Hornby. And this looks at the life of Cassandra Austen, Jane Austen's much loved sister. And although Cassandra was so important to Jane, they had a really special relationship, not that much has been written about her. So I really loved reading this fictional take on Cassandra's life and her relationship with Jane. And it also explores the historical fact of Cassandra destroying so many of Jane Austen's letters after Jane's death. And in this book, Jill Hornby imagines the reasons why Cassandra did that and her choice in destroying the letters. It's got quite a gentle rhythm to it, but it really is a lovely read for any fan of Jane Austen. Jane is a character for much of the book too, and other members of her family come into it. So again, it's just a really charming story that I recommend. I've already spoken a lot about how much I love The Other Bennet Sister by Janice Hadlow, so I won't say too much about it here, but this looks at the most disliked, generally, <laughs> of the Bennet sisters, Mary Bennet, who is perceived as plain and dull and in some ways rather conceited. Well, Janice Hadlow imagines a whole different Mary, but she does it so well in that you do recognise the Mary that is present in Pride and Prejudice and you meet her within the realms of the Pride and Prejudice novel before Elizabeth marries Mr. Darcy. But then Janice Hadlow takes you beyond the realm of Pride and Prejudice and shows you what happens to Mary. And she makes you look at Mary in a whole different light and really root for her. And you so want her to find the happiness that she deserves. And Janice Hadlow just does a brilliant job at paying tribute both to Jane Austen's characters, but also in really creating um, a wonderful heroine of her own. And yeah, I absolutely recommend this. My mum read it when I told her she had to and she really enjoyed it. I gave it to an honorary aunt of mine as well and she absolutely loved it too. So yes, it's a really good book to gift to people. I recommend it. And then I actually just received this book in the mail today. The author very kindly sent it to me and I think it looks really interesting. It's called Bronte's Mistress by Fanola Austin. <laughs> Great last name, <laughs> if spelt a bit differently. And this looks at the Mrs. Rob, is it Robinson? Yes. Lydia Robinson, who became um, Branwell Bronte's lover when um, Anne Bronte was governess to one of Mrs. Robinson's children. And Branwell uh, was also part of the household and, and got to know this woman and had a very scandalous affair with her. And this book looks at the whole story from the perspective of Lydia Robinson. She's really been maligned a lot through history, partly through being quite a lot older than Branwell. And I'm really intrigued by the idea of looking at the story from her perspective. And I really can't wait to read this. And I think any fans of the Brontes would enjoy this book to be interested in it. So yes, I can't wait to get to this one myself. And then this is another Jane Austen related spin-off that also came out last year, along with the others that I've mentioned. I haven't read it yet, but it's one that I'm eager to read, hopefully this month and it's called Charlotte by Helen Moffat and it looks at the story of Charlotte Lucas from Pride and Prejudice. Now I know this book will partly be about motherhood as well because I think that Helen Moffat explores the life of Charlotte after her marriage to Mr Collins and I think she takes the angle that part of what 
why Charlotte wanted that marriage was to have children and she has the longed for children in this book she becomes mistress of her own house but what is it like to be the wife of Mr Collins? <laughs> That's a question that she explores in this novel as well and I'm really interested to read this one and see what I think of it and what happens to Charlotte Lucas. I hope that she finds more happiness than Lizzie and that a lot of women would expect her to. <laughs> so we shall see. And then I wanted to share a few books that I'm hoping to read myself in March that I think sound really interesting and that would be great gift for mothers as well. So this one is Dangerous Ages by Rose McCauley and I started this one and was really enjoying it but I started it in the autumn and it's got a very summery feel to the beginning of the book, it's set in the summer months so I decided to wait until it got a bit warmer sunnier weather and as we're heading into spring I feel I can maybe pick this one up now but I think this would be a great book to read in this month which is really a celebration of women because this is about many generations of women in one family and it looks at women's lives at different stages in their lives and what matters to them, what are considered dangerous ages for women and why. And I think it just sounds like a really interesting book and yeah, one that just would be quite a suitable pick, a suitable pick for this month. So I'm hoping to get to it myself. And then I really want to read Belgravia by Julian Fellows. I watched the TV series last spring and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I really liked the series and it was a great story and it made me want to read the book. And motherhood is really at the, at the heart of this story what mothers will do to protect their young and grandmothers feature as well in the book. So I think it would be a great choice as a gift for Mother's Day and I think it will just be a really fun read as well. I'm looking forward to getting to this one. It will just be a light novel to curl up with in March so I'm looking forward to it myself. And then this is a book that's been on my to be read pile for a while and again I'm hoping to get to it in March because it looks at motherhood in a very in quite a different kind of way and this is a book well the question on the back of the book is can a new life in America be worth the pain of abandoning your daughter? So this looks at rather difficult, fraught mother-daughter relationships. It looks at what it means to be a mother, what it means to be a daughter, as well as an independent woman. It's about a woman's journey from Jamaica to New York, and it's had so many rave reviews that it's, like I said, it's been one I've been meaning to get to for quite a while and haven't yet, but I'm hoping I will this month because it sounds really good. And then I've got some non-fiction choices for you. In all honesty, I think that the paperback version of this book is much more attractive, but um, I bought the hardback and I also have this signed by the author because I went to a really interesting talk about the book. So I'm keeping this one and not getting the paperback, but the paperback's really lovely. <laughs> so I actually do recommend it. This is called Threads of Life by Claire Hunter and this would be a perfect gift for any woman who loves embroidery, loves need needlework or is interested in the history of textiles for instance. It's a really fascinating look at sewing through history and across many different cultures and Claire Hunter really explores how sewing and embroidery has been used both for storytelling and for protest throughout the years and um, throughout many different cultures. So it's just very interesting, really well researched and a very different perspective, I think, on what is considered such a 
domestic, genteel kind of task that women did in many ways. So really recommend this. And then I have to mention this cookbook for Mother's Day. It's by Lisa Faulkner and it's recipes from my mother for my daughter. And she takes you through over a hundred seasonal recipes. This book starts out in the spring, so it's a lovely pick for Mother's Day. Lisa Faulkner, I think she won the Celebrity Master Chef. And it's quite a moving cookbook in some ways because she talks about her own relationship with her mother and with her grandparents, her grandmothers, and the recipes that she was brought up with. And she also writes a bit about her own struggles to become pregnant and have her own child. And then um, her and her husband's eventual adoption of a daughter. And these are the recipes that she wants to pass down to her daughter that have been so important in her family. So lots of good ones in here and really quite a touching story alongside it as well. And then for a more modern cookbook, this one came out last year and it's just really beautiful. I think anyone would love this. And it's A Table for Friends, The Art of Cooking for Two or Twenty by Sky McAlpine. I think part of this Mother's Day, at least for us, is going to be about looking ahead, looking forward to better times this year, about <laughs> much as my mum and I love spending time together, it will also be nice to cook for some other people and have other people over to enjoy our afternoon teas and dinner parties. And this book is a real celebration of not only food, but really sharing food, gathering your friends, gathering your family. And I just love that note of optimism to be feeling right now and looking forward to the future when we can really enjoy all those parties and food for parties again. So I think this would make a really nice gift for Mother's Day this year. And it's just, it's so beautiful. Sky McAlpine's photography is always absolutely stunning. And I feel she, she does simple things really well. It will just take a few ingredients sometimes, but really make them sing. So I recommend this one. And then I wanted to recommend this beautiful book, perfect for any gardener, perfect for any anglophile, and that's The Gardener's Travel Companion to England, What to See and Where to Stay by Janelle McCulloch. I hope that's how you say her last name. I absolutely love her books. They're always so beautiful. And this one is stunning. It's all about gorgeous gardens that you can visit in the UK and where to stay when you're traveling around seeing these gardens. There are also a few notes on good books to read about gardens, which I of course appreciate, and it's full of stunning photographs. So until you can get here, you can do a bit of armchair traveling and just be inspired by Janelle's wonderful words and truly beautiful pictures. I really recommend this book. I can't wait to use it myself to do a bit more traveling about and seeing beautiful gardens. As you know, I'm not a gardener myself, but I absolutely appreciate gardens <laughs> wholeheartedly. So I really can't wait to explore more gardens in the countryside and I'll be using this book as a guide myself and I really recommend it. I think it's beautiful and it would make such a nice gift. So there's that one. And then continuing the floral theme, this is another gorgeous book, On Flowers by Amy Merrick. I think this came out last spring and this is really such a joyful tribute to flowers and to people who love flowers. There are some facts about flowers, but it really is just an ode to the joy that flowers bring. And there are some interesting little snippets, some beautiful photos, a little bit about Amy's life and her love for flowers. I just love the sort of photography and the 
images in general that are included in this. They're stunning. There are a few little recipes, um, little lists of things to do. Like there's a countryside list, for instance, that's really sweet. Here it says how to pick flowers. So, oh yeah, this was the list that I was talking about. Country things to do. Pick your own flowers, dry your sheets in the sun, set a dinner table under the stars, enter a flower arrangement in the country air, uh, fair, sorry, go barefoot, use a gingham tablecloth, just a lovely list of things that make, well, make me happy, I think would make a lot of people happy though. So it's quite a whimsical sort of book, but really a joy to browse and it would make a wonderful coffee table book or bedside table book because it's the type of thing that you just pick up to inspire you for five minutes and it would certainly make a beautiful gift so I recommend this one and then this is another lovely book it's called The Pottery Gardener Flowers and Hens at the Emma Bridgewater Factory and it's by Arthur Parkinson with a foreword by Emma Bridgewater. I know a lot of mums love Emma Bridgewater. I mean, I do too. I love her pottery. It's so gorgeous. I love the seasonal nature to it. And then this is a lovely book, uh, book that looks at the gardens and the hens that are kept in the, at the pottery. And it's just beautifully done. Again, there are some lovely photographs. There are also some good tips on keeping hens if you know anyone who's interested in that. And there's some information about gardening and how to plant, but it's also just a really beautiful book to look at. So I would definitely recommend this to anyone who loves gardening, anyone who loves Emma Bridgewater or chickens. I think this is quite a charming one. And then this is a book that I got my mum at some point. It's Pat Albeck, Queen of the Tea Towel. Well, my mum loves a pretty tea towel. That's sort of well known in our family. And I, her mum did as well. We had this huge collection of tea towels that my mum inherited from her mum. And she loves the tea towels, the artwork for them by Pat Albeck. And this book is essentially a collection of that artwork specifically designed for tea towels. But you can see it's utterly charming and I just find them fascinating. There's such a beautiful retro quality to a lot of them, but the designs themselves are just stunning. And I think it's lovely to be able to have a little piece of artwork in your kitchen in the form of a tea towel. And as my poor mum is always washing up and drying up. I know it cheers her up to have pretty tea towels. So I think a new tea towel and this book will make a really lovely gift. But even if you're just interested in art and design, then I think this is such a fascinating book because the designs are exquisite. I mean, I wish they still made tea towels quite as pretty as this because yeah, they're absolutely stunning. So this is just lovely in terms of inspiration um, and anyone interested in illustration and design. So that's a book I love. And then finally, this enormous beauty of a book that anyone I think would be overjoyed to receive, especially anyone who loves flowers, who loves gardening. This is The Land Gardener's Cut Flowers by Bridget Alworthy and Henrietta Courthold. They are the land gardeners. They have a beautiful Instagram account. I really recommend checking it out. But this book of theirs, I think it only came out last year and it was just stunning. Maybe the year before, I can't remember, but it's quite a recent publication. And I adore their photography. The, la uh, the, the, yeah, the land gardeners, um, have these beautiful, beautiful cut flower gardens um, that's part of the estate of a lovely old house in the English countryside. And when they took over the garden, it was really in a bit of a mess and they sort of completely transformed the cut gardens. So this book 
is about how to grow your own cut gardens. But there's also a lovely, well, there is just so many beautiful photographs. It's really inspiring to also get ideas on how to arrange flowers. There's information on when you should gather particular flowers. It takes you season by season through the year. But I also am always particularly inspired by all the floral arrangements that they show in this book. And like I said, the photography is just so stunning and it's a really big book. So you can really see the beautiful photographs right up close. And I just love them. I find them so inspiring. So again, this would just make a wonderful coffee table book. And I think it would just be a truly beautiful gift for anyone. But anyway, those are my recommendations. I hope you found those useful. Thank you so much for watching. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up over here on the screen. But I'll be back again very soon with another bookish video. So see you then.